This is a Lovett physics video introducing quantum tunneling for IB level physics, unit 12. Imagine you have a ball in a bowl. Now, if that ball wanted to get out of that bowl, it would need enough energy to get right the way up over the top and down the other side. In this case, that would be gravitational potential energy. So I could give it a bit of energy and it couldn't get out unless it had enough energy to get all the way over here. Even if it could pay that energy back just as it got over the other side and it could pay it back very quickly and go back to the same level it was before, it still needs that extra energy to get it over that barrier. However, in quantum physics, in the world of the very, very small, things are governed by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And what that means is that for a short amount of time, if our uncertainty of time is very small, then our uncertainty of energy can be very big. And so if we've got our ball in our bowl, for a very short amount of time, the ball can borrow the energy from the uncertainty principle. And so it can get out of the bowl. Now this borrowing of energy is called quantum tunneling because we can visualize the electron or the particle, whatever it is, tunneling through the sides of the bowl. Now, if we apply the idea of a wave function to that bowl, here is the, the particle in the middle. So the wave function would have the largest amplitude there. So it's most likely that you would find that electron in the bowl somewhere. But there is a small probability There is a small probability that we would find the electron outside of the bowl. This wave function has a much smaller amplitude, but it is not zero. So electrons can tunnel through the barrier and be found outside of the bowl, even if they don't have enough energy to get over the sides. Now we can look at some examples of quantum tunneling. Um, the first one is in the sun. In the sun, we have, uh, we have hydrogen nuclei, and we know that hydrogen nuclei are positively charged. And so there, there is an electrostatic repulsion there. Positive charge repels positive charge. But because of quantum tunneling, then the position of this object is uncertain. If you think about it in terms of the energy again, the, the, if it gets to a certain distance away from this hydrogen ion, then the strong nuclear force takes over so it can repay the energy. So it just borrows enough energy to tunnel through this charge barrier to get close enough to this nucleus and then the strong force pulls them together and it pays the energy back. So nuclear fusion happening in the sun is one example of quantum tunneling. Now for another example, if you have uh, one of the recent iPhones, um, then you have a 3D touch. Now, 3D touchscreens work by having lots of conducting crystals in a grid like this. And when you press a little bit harder on a particular area, those crystals move slightly closer together. And when they do move closer together, they move close enough for electrons to be able to tunnel across from one to the other. They borrow energy so they can jump from one to the other and then pay the energy back. And that current, that movement of electrons, that electric current from one to the other is recorded by the phone. And so it can tell when you're pushing harder on your phone screen. So two very different examples. Quantum tunneling is all around us. There are loads of other examples, but those are two commonly seen ones. That was an introduction to quantum tunneling with Lovett Physics. 
If you liked it and you want to see some more, please subscribe. Thanks. Thanks.